All right, let's take a look now at a couple of quick problems that'll have us practice relating cell potential to Gibbs free energy change. Our first question, use the tabulated electrode potentials to calculate delta G for the reaction. Boom, here are our reduction potentials. We wanna know, is the reaction spontaneous? Alrighty, as we take a look at our equation, notice that it's the iodine that's being reduced. The iodine that matches the reduction half reaction provided. And it's the bromine that we need to reverse or flip because in the equation, it is being oxidized. Boom. So notice here, I've flipped the reduction of bromine to show the oxidation of the bromide ion. Notice as well that for the oxidation potential, I've maintained the value of the reduction potential, but changed the sign. A little easier with the reduction half reaction because I don't have to worry about flipping anything around and I don't have to worry about changing my sign. I'm gonna sum these together to get the overall cell potential for this reaction, which is negative 0.55 volts. Okay, now that I've determined my cell potential, I'm gonna simply recall or check out on my formula chart the relationship between delta G and my cell potential. My number of moles of electrons transferred is two. Faraday's constant is 96,500 coulombs per mole of electrons. That's the charge carried by one mole of electrons. And since we have two moles, we're gonna multiply that number by two to get the total charge carried by transferring two moles of electrons. Then we're gonna multiply that by our cell potential, jump over to our calculator. Two times 96,500, enter, times negative 0.55, enter, times negative one, enter. I get a delta G value of 1.1 times 10 to the five joules. Boom, that's my value for delta G. Because the value of delta G is positive, the reaction is not thermodynamically favorable or non-spontaneous. Now, if you're wondering where joules came from, first of all, recognize that Gibbs free energy is what we're solving for, and joules is a great unit for energy. But how do we get there based on the units? Well, recognize that a volt, one volt, is equal to one joule per coulomb. So substituting your units here as joules per coulomb will get your unit of coulombs to cancel out and leave you with joules. Boom, done. 